to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel the of christ spreading the soul-saving message of and jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ what is it that separates christians from those who just claim the name of christ Friend, it's the way they live that makes us special. It's the way Christians live that make us unique. And today we're going to talk about daily Christian living. We hope you get your Bible and you'll stay tuned as we're going to study this very important subject together. In Luke 9.23, Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. What makes Christians unique? What makes their lives stand out? What makes it something that ought to be a, attractive to the world and God glorifying? The way we live ought to be that answer to the questions that we've mentioned. Christians ought to live for Christ every day. And friend, I know there are those who, 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 who may dress nice on Sunday. I know there are those who may proclaim and pretend that they're Christians. But to really be a follower of Christ, it's a part of my life every hour of every day. Daily Christian living is one of the great principles that we read about in the New Testament. And so today we want to think about this wonderful idea of what it really means to live for Christ every day. I suspect that every follower of Christ wants to know to this answer, wants to know the answer to this good question. What do I need to do as a Christian every day to be faithful to the Lord? And friend, we hope to look to the Bible today and let God give us the answer. Now, let's notice the requirements first of all from Luke chapter 9 verse 23. What does it really mean to take up our cross daily? Well, first, you've got to have that desire to live for Christ every day. Now watch what Jesus says in Luke 9, 23 again. If any man desires to come after me, there first of all in the heart of man has to be that, that strong desire, that overriding emphasis in one's life that more important than anything else is to do the will of God. I know Paul had that. Paul said in Philippians 1, verse 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That needs to be in my mindset. Be faithful unto death. Revelation 2 verse 10, live for Christ more than anything else. I want to have the mindset of, I want to seek the kingdom above all else. Matthew chapter 6 verse number 33. Friend, we ask ourselves today, do we really want to do God's will above all else? Acts 9 verse 6, the apostle Paul or Saul at the time asked a great, great question that I've got to ask myself every day. Lord, what would you have me to do? That's what we're talking about today. In a practical sense, on a daily level, where the rubber meets the road, what does God want me to do every day? Do we really have that strong desire to do God's will? Really, we're asking, above all else, do I love the Lord first? What's the greatest commandment? Jesus was asked that very question by a lawyer in the New Testament. In Mark 12, verse 30, he answered, the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. Above all else, do I love God? Am I willing to sacrifice? Do I have that desire? Friend, here's what we're asking today. More than anything else in your life, do you desire to go to heaven first? Do you really desire to put God first? That's what Jesus is emphasizing at the very outset of Christian living. I'm not talking about, you know, one foot in the church and one foot in the... I'm talking about real commitment above all else to the Lord and Savior. Secondly, Jesus said, for us to live for Him every day, not only must we have an overriding desire to do that, I've got to deny self. Listen to Luke 9.23 again. 
Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Friend, to really have practical daily Christian living as the theme and the motto for my life and yours, I've got to be willing to deny selfish interest, wants, and desires. Now this is a theme that is mentioned over and over again in the New Testament. Do you remember Romans 12 beginning in verse 1? The Apostle Paul said, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What did Paul say about our life in Romans 12 verse 1? Present your bodies a living sacrifice. There's the idea. We talk about denial of self. We're talking about laying ourself, laying our body on the altar of service for God. And that God and Christ and, and His will is going to come first. And if that means I've got to deny myself, hey, I'm willing to do that for Jesus Christ. Paul thought about it this way in Galatians 2 verse 20 when he said, as he looked at his Christian life, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live, Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That old man, the old desires, the old selfish wants and sinful attitudes, been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live. That's what the Apostle Paul said. 2 Corinthians 5 tells us the motivating factor for that. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15 says, The love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, all died. He died for all, that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but live for Him who died for them and rose again. There's the mindset. When I think about God's amazing love, it causes me to die to self and live for God and live for Christ every day. You know, there's a group of people in the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 that are going to be commended as very liberal, very generous givers. But here's why they could do that. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 5, they first gave themselves to the Lord. Paul would put it this way. Here's the daily aspect. I die daily. That's what we're talking about. You see, when we think about living for Christ, when we think about that denial of self, this is what our life is about as a Christian. No longer living for our interests, our desires, our wants, fulfilling man's passion and every whim and desire, but it's to be lived for God. And when I obeyed the gospel, did we realize that's what I promised to do? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? Listen to this. And you are not your own. What do you mean, Paul? For you are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. I need to deny self because now, since I've been bought with that great price, I'm no longer going to live and act and talk the way I used to. And then thirdly, as we think about the mindset and the readiness and what it really means to live daily for Christ, I've got to have a strong dedication to follow Jesus. Listen to what the Lord said again. If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. I've got to have that dedication to take up that cross and follow Jesus every day. Peter said it this way in 1 Peter 2 verse 21. To this were we called, because Christ also suffered and died for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in His footsteps. There's the mindset. I want to follow in the footsteps of Christ every day. I want to imitate Paul as he imitated Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. I want to be like those in Revelation 14, 4, who followed the Lamb wheresoever He went. That's the attitude. That's the mindset. That's the commitment. Wherever Jesus goes, I want to go. Whatever The way Jesus talked, the way He acted, I want to emulate and have the dedication in my life to follow the Savior to the best of my ability. Now, once we have that mindset, once we realize the ingredients, an overriding desire to follow Christ, a denial of self, and a complete dedication to the Lord, 
What, what aspects are there then of daily Christian living? Here's what we're asking. When we look to the Bible, what does the Bible say are some things the child of God should do every day? What's part of the ingredients of daily Christian living? Well, friend, the Bible first of all says daily Bible study is a part of daily Christian living. Let's notice Acts chapter 17, verse number 11. It is said of the Bereans, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. Why? In that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the Scriptures, here's the word, daily to see if these things were so. What does the Bible say is a part of daily Christian living? Daily Bible study. Friend, are you reading your Bible regularly? That's a part of daily Christian living according to the Scripture. Am I studying my Bible? Am I taking time to read the Word of God? Am I being encouraged and strengthened by the Scriptures? Now, here's the value of that. John 8 verse 32, it's the truth that sets us free. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us we want to study not only to be free, but to show ourselves approved unto God. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer. Proverbs 15, verse number 28. And I want to be ready always to give an answer for everyone to ask a reason of the hope that is within me with meekness and with fear. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Your word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12. And so when we talk about, okay, here's some things that the Bible says ought to be part of every Christian's life every day. Friend, Bible study ought to be right up at the top of that. And so let's look at our lives. Let's ask ourselves. Let's be honest. Am I studying my Bible like I ought to? Remember it was the Lord who said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 following. Now, if I had to stand before the Lord and give an account of how much I've studied my Bible, how would that fare? Does it, how strong am I as a Christian? The Bible gives us strength. Uh, Bible ignorance is one of the things the Scripture clearly teaches is contrary to the will of God. And I want to make sure that unlike the people in Hosea 4, verse 6, that I'm not destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Secondly, as we think about things a Christian ought to do every day, let's realize that daily evangelism ought to be a big part of that. In Acts chapter 5, the apostles have been beaten. They've been told in Acts chapter 4, we don't want you speaking about the name of Jesus. They're eventually going to be imprisoned by that because of that. In Acts chapter 5, now they've been beaten and they've been told again, don't fill Jerusalem with this doctrine. Don't be speaking about Christ anymore. And here's what the Bible says they did. You'd think they might throw in the towel or give up. The Bible says, after they were beaten and released, and daily, there's that word, daily in the temple and from house to house, they ceased not teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. As I look to my Christian life every day, what's one of the things I need to do? I need to find, look for, and make opportunities to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. What a privilege that is. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel unto every creature. Mark 16, verse 15. Go to all nations. Matthew 28, verse number 18. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1 verse 28. Uh, think about the people in your life and the people in my life. My family, my friends, my co-workers, those that I come in contact with on a regular basis every day. That's a mission field. Those are opportunities. Those are people that I can impact with the good news of Jesus every day. And it's something I ought to want to do. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says that we've been called out of darkness to proclaim the praises of Him who called us out of that darkness into His marvelous light. That's one of the reasons I've been called as a Christian is to share the message of Jesus Christ. Like in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8 verse 4, Christians went everywhere preaching the Word and we need to have that same mindset 
that we're going to go as far and as wide as we can to tell others the saving message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as we think about practical Christianity, something I can do every day for the Lord, not only can I study my Bible, but I can also look for opportunities to say to someone, have you heard the good news about Jesus? Do you, have you studied your Bible? Are you sure you're a Christian? Do, do you want to have the hope and joy of forgiveness in your life? Would you like to sit down and study and see what the Scripture says about God's plan of salvation? And friend, while there may be those who don't hear, my responsibility is simply to sow the seed. My responsibility is simply to try to share God's Word with them that whether they respond properly relies on their heart and their desire, but I have that wonderful privilege to share the good news with others. Then a third aspect of daily Christian living that the Bible identifies is prayer. How much are you praying every day in your Christian life? Friend, the Bible teaches that prayer ought to be a part of every Christian's life every day. Listen to Psalm 86, verse number 3. The psalmist said these words, I cry unto you daily. The psalmist knew how important prayer was. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, it overcomes much. This is why Paul would say in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, pray without ceasing. Jesus would say, men ought to pray always and never lose heart. Luke 18, 1. And this is why, as we think about the model for everyday Christian living, the Bible says in Mark 1, verse 35, of Jesus' own day in the morning, a great while before daylight, He departed, went to a solitary place, and there prayed. Jesus saw it fitting to pray every day. The Bible says we ought to be a people of prayer. And friend, think about what prayer does for us. Prayer takes Christians before the throne of God. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we might find grace and mercy to help in time of need. There's help to be had. I can approach the very throne of grace through the avenue of prayer. And so as we think about Bible study and evangelism, Let's also include as part of our Christian life, prayer. How much are we praying? You know, we sing about prayer. We preach about it. We, we talk about praying. We, we believe in it. But do we really practice? Do we really make it a part of our everyday life? We need God's help. We need God's strength. We need wisdom. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, James 1 verse 5. And friend, we need to be a people of prayer. Great men and women of the Bible who we think about that conquered great battles, that won uh, victories on behalf of God, that were faithful to the Lord. You also look at their life. And these were people of prayer as well. Here's another aspect of Christian living on a daily level. And that is we need daily encouragement and daily exhortation. The Hebrew writer is talking to Christians in Hebrews 3, verses 12 and 13, some of whom are contemplating going back to the world, some of whom are thinking about giving up on Christ, giving up on their faith. And he says, instead of giving up, we need to encourage one another every day. Listen to Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Every Christian needs encouragement. You know, in the Old Testament, Moses needed encouragement. God put Moses in battle and he told him that as long as his hands were held up, they'd win the battle. But when Moses' hands began to sag and become weary, they propped his hands up. He needed that encouragement and help and strength. Friend, I need the same today and so do you. We need to encourage, try to be an encourager. Barnabas in the Bible is known as the son of encouragement. He was evidently very good at encouraging others. And every day I need to look for opportunities to encourage someone, to strengthen those who I can, to help in any way as a child of God. But then let me give you a fifth aspect of daily Christian living, and that is daily 
benevolence. Acts chapter 6 verse 1 we read of in the New Testament those who were helping the Grecian widows and the Bible says those are being neglected that there was a daily distribution for them. You know when you read about Christianity, Christianity is all about helping others and doing good isn't it? Those who are poor, those who are needy, those who are hurting, those who are sick. As a child of God I need to look for opportunities in my life to do good. Isn't that part of real Christianity anyway? What's pure religion all about? If I said to you, break down Christianity in one of its purest forms, what would it be? Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this. To visit, and that word means to take care of, not just go over and say hi, to visit the widows and the orphans in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. In its purest form, Christianity is doing good and helping others. How do we know that? Well, that's the model Jesus set, right? Jesus fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He helped those who were having problems. He did good to all men. Uh, why do you think it's said of Jesus, the common people heard Him gladly? Mark 12, verse 37. Because those are the very people who Jesus was with day in and day out. He helped them. He healed their sick. He fed those who were hungry. He cast out demons of those who were possessed. And friend, every Christian needs to look for opportunities to help the needy, to help the poor. Why do we want to do that? To just fill their stomach, to make them feel better? No, because we want them to see the love of God. We want them to see the love of Christ, and we want to make an impact in their life and open a door to share the gospel with them. Benevolence is not an end in and of itself. It is a means to do good, to show the love of God, to help people see the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, what is it in view of all that we've talked about today in daily Christian living, what is it then that, that motivates me, that kind of gives me a push, a motivation every day to want to live for Christ, even on those days when, you know, maybe things don't go right or maybe I'm a little more sluggish or maybe I just need a, somebody to kind of push me. What is it that motivates me every day to live for Christ? Friend, I'm motivated in view of the second coming of Christ and the end of the world. There, God has appointed a day in which He'll judge the world in righteousness. Acts 17, verse 30 and 31, and He's given a proof of that by Jesus Christ that He is coming again to judge the world. Matthew 24, verse 36, Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. There's a great day coming when Christ is going to come to receive His own. We don't know when that day is going to be. We know that this life is not going to last forever. And friend, I want to be ready when the Lord comes so that I can serve Him and so that I can be faithful to Him in every way. And so as we think about today, this idea, and as we think about the coming of the Lord, we want to think, are we ready for that day? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. John 14, verses 1 through 3. The Bible teaches that when Christ comes, He's going to, we're going to be caught, if we're alive when He comes, we're going to be caught up with Him in the air. Don't you want to be ready on that day? The Bible teaches clearly that this life is not going to last forever. The earth and all that's in it is one day going to be burned up. Friend, are, are you living daily for Christ? Are you ready for the coming of our Lord? James said in James 4 verse 14, What is your life? It's but a vapor that appears for a little while and then it vanishes away. Life's short. Life's brief. I've got to make sure that I give my best to live for the Lord each and every day. And friend, if you're not ready, the encouragement today is let's get ready. Let's make sure we're obedient to God and His will. Jesus asked the question in Luke 6, 46 to certain Jews, certain pious, hypocritical Jews who thought they were the next best thing to Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? It's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there, but he who does the will of the Father. We must be obedient to the Lord each and every day. Friend, if you're not a child of God, our encouragement to you today is become a Christian. Be a part of a life that is more meaningful, that is bigger, that has an eternal perspective. 
And that's the life that follows our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you today believe Jesus is God's Son? John 8 verse 24. Would you be willing to repent of sin and turn to Christ? Luke 13 verse 3. Would you make that good confession? I believe Jesus is the Christ the Son of the living God, Acts 8, verse 36 through 38. And would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins, Acts 2, verse 38. But maybe as a Christian, you know your life's not being lived every day for Christ. Maybe you know there are things that are deficient, that are missing in your life. Friend, make that right. Make sure that you're living for God every day, and then you'll hear those words, Well done. Good and faithful servant. We hope you join us next time as we think more about the gospel of Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, radio, and internet. Our motto is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.